Hello everyone. I am just joining you in right now. So if you are here, Facebook world, let me know if you can hear me because I always have to pray against technical difficulties because I'm technically challenged. Um, I'm so excited to be with you guys this evening. Um, I'm going to warn you, I have had some really interesting prophetic conversations today. So I've already been like filled with fire. Like I've just on like <laughs> tonight, this, this uh, message is going to be a little bit different than, you know, what I've normally done. So if you're joining me, I'm just really grateful that you're here. Hi guys. Thanks. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for joining in Vanessa and Irina, I have to take time to actually say hi to you guys. I'm getting better about reading comments, um, but still it totally distracts me. So <laughs> it's better I don't always focus on those. But yeah, if there's any technical problems, you just let me know, guys, because, you know, <laughs> I try my best. But hello, friends. I'm so glad some of you are here tonight. I am. Um, I wanted to share with you guys a couple of heaven encounters that I feel are really important right now. I feel like it's not just for me. I don't always release all my heaven encounters, but I am like, I feel so much passion on these right now that I'm like this, I have to release this. I just, I have to. And, um, yeah, I don't know how to dive into it, but just go. So if you're just joining in, just, you know, hang in there. Um, with me. I was uh, recently at a conference in Dallas. So some of you have been asking where I've been traveling. That's where I was. I was in Dallas, Texas. I was at um, this wonderful woman, Elizabeth Tim Fook. She put together a prophetic conference for um, young prophets. It was like International Young Prophets Conference Surge. It was amazing, you guys. I just want to take a moment and just share a little bit of that because I tried to do like a live video from it, but I really couldn't. Like the internet was bad and I was, I felt like I spent four days like on the, on the floor just under the fiery presence of God. So I'm like, I didn't even have time to get out my phone or anything. I was just undone by the presence of God. And, um, what was so beautiful is there was prof like seasoned prophets there. Um, Stacy Campbell was there, Patricia King, Bishop Heyman, um, Jane Tom Heyman um, were there, and they all prayed over us and just imparted a ton to us younger prophets. And it was beautiful because it was like um, just bridged the gap in between the generations, you know, of us being like, we honor you guys for being pioneers and everything that they have brought to us as a body is amazing. Barbara Yoder, I don't want to miss her. She was there and my goodness, she brought fire to us all. But we honored them and then they honored us as the newer newer voices and just, um, just I felt like imparted so much to us. So I was so grateful to be a part of that. So I want to back up. Um, let me get my water. <laughs> Thanks guys for joining in right now. I see you all joining. So I was asked to be on this panel one evening, which is kind of funny because when I got up there, I was with all men. <laughs> I was like, Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> and, um, it was just kind of like an inside on a side note, it was like an inside joke of the Lord to me. I felt like um, God just had, it was like a sweet cherry on top because I can't even tell you how much um, just opposition I've sometimes experienced uh, from men just being like a young woman in ministry. And so it was just so like such a good thing for my own heart because they were like, we love you, Anna. We honor what you're doing. And I was like, I love you guys. I honor you, what you're doing. So it was just like, it was just the Lord to do that to me. It just blew me away. Totally surprised me because I got up there and I was with all guys and I was like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know how it arranged and worked out that way, but it was Jesus. It was. So I got on this panel and I was the first person like in the lineup and it was like, okay, ready to go. We're going to ask you these questions. And I haven't, like, I wasn't prepared at all. So I just kind of was like, okay, just go for it. You know, whatever God says, pray there's something on it. <laughs> and um, one thing that I was asked was, what are two uh, non-compromising things for you in your ministry? 
And right away, like I was like, I have to share this encounter that I just had recently. And I want to share this with you. That's what I want to, I'm just, you know, talking about it, but I want to share it with you because I had this encounter that was so impactful and it happened right before this conference. And I feel like it's not just for me. There is so much on it and I'm going to try to unpack it for you tonight. But um, that being said, it has to do with the non-compromising things that I feel are part of like just who I am, my walk with the Lord. And, um, but I think it challenge, it challenges me all the time. So this encounter went like this. It was right before this conference, like a week before. And I woke up, it was a Sunday morning and, um, Jesus told me, I heard the Lord say, uh, Anna, I want you to stay back from church. I have an agenda for you. That's what I heard. And so I told my husband, Sam, I said, you know, I just think I'm supposed to stay back to this morning and God has an agenda for me. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I'm going to go with it. So Sam was like, okay. So he took the kids to church. So I had the whole house to myself and I'm like, okay, Jesus, like what, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> so I'm worshiping him. I'm reading my word. I'm listening to worship music and it's like nothing. Like, it, I mean, it's good, but it's not like, it wasn't like, okay, here's this heaven encounter, right? Like, I'm just being real. <laughs> like, um, so I'm worshiping the Lord and, um, I ended up listening to, uh, this prayer. I forget who it was now. I'm sorry, but I listened to this prayer online. There's someone praying. And when this person was praying, I was undone. Like the presence of the Lord hit me and flew me like onto the floor in my bathroom. And I was just like on the floor and I could feel like the weighty presence of the Lord. It wasn't hot. It wasn't cold. It was just weight on me like a almost like if you go to get an x-ray and they put that blanket on you that's kind of what it felt like that heavy presence and so then I crawled from my bathroom floor and I made it to my bed and I'm like because if I'm like if I'm gonna be in the presence I at least want to be warm <laughs> it's cold here in Kansas City Missouri um not today today's a little bit warmer but it was cold then so I got on my bed I'm under the blankets and I'm suddenly finding myself in heaven. Boom. Just like that. And what I saw was amazing. So I saw first these, it was like a grassy hill and there is these footprints going up the hill. Like I couldn't see what was making the footprints, but I could see the footprints going one by one up this hill. And I knew, okay, I'm going to go run after that because I have often seen footprints. That's just how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Often in heaven, he gives me like footprints and it it's like a lead to take me somewhere else, if that makes sense. So where it'd be a ladder, like I'll see a ladder descending and I'll see footprints going up the ladder and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go follow Holy Spirit or that angel, whatever's making those, those footprints, I'm going to go follow it. If that makes sense to y'all. If you're like, what are you talking about? Just hang with me. So I follow these footprints up this grassy hill and um, right when I get to the top of the hill, there's Jesus. Like right there, you guys, like right there. And he's just looking at me and smiling at me. And it was like so amazing. I just ran and I just dove into his arms, just like a child. Like it's, you know, it was just like, I just was like a child, like a grown up woman, but a child. And I just dove into his arms and ended up knocking Jesus over. And he, um, which is just funny. You think about it, like the King of Kings and I knocked him over. <laughs> And knocked him over, but see, that's how much of a friend he is, you know, knocked him over. And he hoisted me on his knees, like, like you do with your children. And he took my arms and he spread them open like this, like hand, like he had my hands and he just spread my arms open like this. And I was soaring doing the airplane, like with Jesus. I know it sounds crazy, but I was looking in his eyes, like I was just looking in his eyes, and it's like, we were just laughing together, and he was smiling at me, and I was just looking at his eyes, and I was just in this place like this, and then I heard this phrase. I heard, Anna, Anna, you soar with me and keep your focus, 
And I was like, wow. Now rewind, I forgot to mention this. When I was like this in his arms, suddenly, like within a vision, I had another vision, which is kind of crazy, but sometimes that happens. So I saw a picture of myself that is a, it's a real picture. I've seen it in a photo album a long time ago, like in my parents, they have a photo album of this, where I'm like um, doing the airplane with my dad. And it's like Jesus reminding me in that moment that I used to love to do that when um, I was a kid with my dad. So anyways, back to what he said. I heard, Anna, Anna, you soar, you soar with me in everything and you keep your focus. And that was it. That was the vision. And I, like, I was back on my bed just sobbing. I was just sobbing. And I want to unpack this for you all, guys, because you're like, okay, that just seems simple. But it, it actually really impacted me in such a deep way. Um, I feel like, like the first part was, I mean, I could preach this message over and over. It's like, it's so part of my core. But the place of intimacy where it was just me and Jesus and my eyes were so, like the focus part, my eyes were so on him and he was smiling back at me and I was smiling and laughing with him. It's like that place of intimacy. Um, we, it's uh, like, what is so exciting was at that conference, there was a lot of us that were saying like the same things. And it was so exciting because it was prophets like internationally, like come in from all different kinds of countries and different streams of ministry as well. And we're all like saying the same thing about, we've got to get back to the basics. We can't lose intimacy. Like we can't, you can't go for glory and go for all the supernatural. It's amazing. Like, of course, I love the glory. I love being a walk in heaven. I love gold dust. I love feathers. I love legs bring out. I love healing. I mean, I see it all. I love it, right? But out of, like, it won't stand. Like, how you maintain the glory is that out of that place of intimacy. And it's like, I feel like worldwide, Jesus is like, come back. Come back, my bride. Come back to the place where you love me. You love me above it all. Like above it all, because see, we can get, um, this is where I'm getting fiery. I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm just so full right now. We can get to the place where we actually idolize the supernatural. Like we can look towards that and, and just idolize and get fixated on that rather than just fixate on him, right? Like the glory, the supernatural, all that comes from that place. Like of just love, pure love, pure love. The pure prophetic, it's coming back to that first place of love, right? And then the second part about um, sore. Uh, sorry, it's really cold down here. So I'm like, I got warm tea, I got candles going. Sore. Okay, so here I'm soaring, right? And I'm like this. And I'm sorry. Now I heard this song too. I forgot to tell you this. I'm, I always... Like, I'm not a singer, but I always get songs. So it's just funny. But it's like a rendition of a worship song. And it went, um, arms wide open, my heart exposed. And arms wide open, my heart exposed. If you didn't catch that, because I can't hit the notes and everything. But this place of freedom and the pure prophetic, um, there is, <clears throat> like, worldwide right now, there is a, a movement going on in the prophetic. It is, I think that sometimes we can get, it gets a little dangerous when we put people that carry prophetic mantle or something like that, like on a, a bit of a pedestal. And um, yeah, I'm, be, I'm, I'm gonna go there, y'all. <laughs> if you're joining now, you're like, uh oh, where is she going? But okay. There is something about, like, bear with me, but people who are who they are, right? They are who they are, no matter what. Like transparency as prophets, just being who they are. Everyday people, okay? Everyday people carrying the prophetic, carrying the power of God, but changing diapers. Amen? <laughs> like, I deal with poop. Like daily, lots of it. <laughs> oh, I deal with tantrums daily. I deal with homeschooling right now.
now. But I still feel like called to prophesy and heal the sick and lead people into heaven encounters. Like that's still my absolute passion. But I am who I am. That's what I felt like when, like, when I like, I am who I am and I'm not also afraid to touch people, like to touch and hug people and cry with people as I minister. Like, if you've ever gone to one of my conferences, you know that. Like, I, I'm, like, in there. Like, I jump off the stage. One time I was, like, crowd surfing you guys in, like, Bermuda. I, like, literally had – they had to, like, voice me off the stage. I was, like, in high heels. And I just dove because I saw, like, the Lord's presence over this person. I saw an angel carrying something. And I was, like, I got to get there. But I couldn't because there was, like, so many people crowd from. So I just, like, died. Like, I dove, <laughs> like, off the stage. And they helped me, you know, get there. But – it's like we, we can't be afraid to touch people and be who we are, you guys. Your best gift is who you are. Your best gift. I feel like somebody needs to hear this tonight because um, I feel like the Lord wants to shake off intimidation on some of us that have had, um, whoo, shakurabate. Maybe you've had a bad experience possibly with leadership where you just, you know, you felt oppressed or I just feel like there's some form of oppression or intimidation that's just getting shaken off people right now. Like you, just be who you are. You're a real person, right? I'm a real person. I make mistakes, but I love the Lord. I'm willing to risk it all. And I love him with my whole heart. Like I love him. I love him. Um, God, like God speaks his secrets to those who are really intimate and close to him. And then he rewards risk. He really does. Like, he really, really does. But see, I feel like that's the thing. Like, And this was something that was said around the room between all of us at this conference was like the pure prophetic, the pure prophetic, being who you are. Freedom, come on. Like freedom <laughs> to be who you are, to say what it is you want to say. Like, And that doesn't mean, okay, you just say whatever and you blast your mouth, but it's that you're not under fear of man. Okay, we can't be, we can't, um, this is the thing. This right now, this generation, whew, I just feel fire. Come on. <laughs> this generation, right? Like what we're in right now is a prove it mentality. We're like in, I got to prove myself. I got to prove myself. But we can't carry that into our ministry. That same thing of the world of prove it. We cannot carry that into our ministry and think we're going to gain any kind of authority, hold any ground against the enemy. Because Lily will take you out so fast. Take you out so fast if you're under that. The prove it mentality is under the yoke of fear. A oh, man, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. This is so hard on my heart right now. Freedom, freedom to the prophets. Where are the prophets that will come and speak fire, that won't be afraid to go after what they're sensing, what they're seeing, what they're not be under fear of man or fear of making mistakes? Come on, Jesus. So many people I know, you carry prophetic. Like you carry the prophetic, but because of fear of making mistakes, it holds you back. Like it, it, you know, and then you don't step into the next level, if that makes sense. Like we had someone in our healing rooms recently say we were ministering and he, he was like, he was like, I don't know. I'm just stepping into the prophetic. I get this name for you to this girl who is for asking for prayer. And it was like, Oh, and she's like, Oh, I like, I do have a friend under that person, like under that name, but it was like, okay, I don't know. Like, and he's like, I, and he said, I think they're going to come back into the picture and be a part of the solution. And he just said it. And he was just like, I don't know. I'm just learning prophetic. Guess what? Guess what, y'all? Like two months later, she comes to the healing rooms. I kid you not, like two weeks ago. And, and that word was so dead on because that person is now in her life and he is part of the solution to problem, big time problems she was going through in her life. But see, that's it. Risk, risk, risk. Okay, freedom, soar, 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 and keep your love on with Jesus. Don't be afraid of who you are. Like, don't, whoo, <laughs> I feel so much fire right now. I'm so sorry. Jesus, thank you. Listen, I, it's, I, even, I think I even was bold enough to say this at this conference, but and it's not out of pride. I say, 
I know who I am because I know who he is. Amen. I don't have to prove myself. I don't because I just point back to him. I point back to him. I want him to get all the glory. So I don't have anything to prove. I just love him. and I go after him. But I know who I am. I know who I am because I know who he is. He loves me. He loves you, guys. Who's ever listening to this? I just want to minister it right now on this point because I feel Holy Spirit speaking to me. The, the freedom. Somebody, you've been under oppression in your place of ministry, whether that be a church, whether that be your, in your own home, whether that be at your work, whatever your sphere looks like. Like sometimes we can think ministry and just think, okay, well, Anna, like I'm at home. I don't, like I'm not at a church speaking. I'm not a preacher. You know, wherever your sphere is, you are there to influence it. Amen. But you have to influence it under who you are. Don't put on somebody else's mantle. This generation, let me tell you, this generation can see through it. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. If you, you, we can see through it. Like if someone's not being who they are, I feel like this generation's like, mm, I'm done. Lost my attention. Bye bye. You know, <laughs> you can see right through. We can see right through it. So be who you are. It's the best gift. Whew. Okay, y'all ready? I have another heaven encounter for you. <laughs> Jump on. If you're joining in, comment to me. Let me know you're here. Let me know you can hear me so I know I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, I have another heaven encounter to share with you really quick. Um, and then I want to take some time at the end to pray for you. I want to invite you into your own heaven encounter. Now that's always awkward. I never do them online because it's always awkward if technical things go weird and funky and I don't want to interrupt your Jesus encounter because <laughs> my computer's being weird. So I, I'm like, Lord, we're going to pray. We're going to pray over the computer that everything goes okay. Um, okay. So the second heaven encounter wasn't in the same time. It was just recently. I was soaking it was in the early morning because I get up really early, spend time with the Lord before my little kid lets get up because they love to get up really early <laughs> no matter what we do. <laughs> so um, I was up really early and um, suddenly I saw a picture and it was just so clear like that. I saw the heart. I saw a big, big heart and I saw four chambers of this heart. And I heard the father's voice say, I'm inviting you in to my heart. I want to show you something on it today. Listen, guys, if you're commenting, I can't really hear. I can't really see, read them. They stop. So I'm just going to keep going for it. Okay. So I heard um, the father's voice. God say, I heard his voice and he said, I'm inviting you into my heart today. And I saw these four chambers and there was rivers flowing out of the four chambers. And I was like, wow, okay, that's really cool. So I go in and... Um, I saw, so then the next thing I saw was I saw this, it looked like this um, woman almost, she was beautiful, you guys, like beautiful, um, and she was full of light, and I couldn't look directly in her face to distinguish her, you know, from exactly who she was, right, but she, I saw her, and she had this, like something almost over her head, like this, and I heard in that moment, it's my bride. It's my bride. And then as I watched, and I was like, wow. And I was just looking at her, like taking it all in. And then as I watched, I saw something go like this, take his hand and pull this thing back. And when I saw it pull back, there was this crown that was under that, that was just boom. Like it radiated so much light off of it that it I couldn't even look at her anymore I couldn't even look I was like oh my goodness right and and it's not about and, and he it wouldn't when this thing came off and the light was like boom I heard freedom freedom is being released over the bride of Christ and it's this thing wasn't about don't get me wrong it's not about uh, not being under coverage, not being, um, you know, under people that keep you in accountability or authority. That's that's actually not what I'm saying at all. But it was about um, breaking out of 
don't get me wrong, I'm just going to say it how it is. The church, church has got to get off the intimidation. We've got to shake off intimidation really off the church. It's We have to rise up to our place of authority and influence wherever your realm of influence is. And I saw this boom, and it was just like the most beautiful thing. Um, when we were at this conference, a lot of us talked and said the same phrases. Like it was, it was just, and it wasn't in like out there. It was like during lunch and like breakout times when we were just hanging out together. And we're like, what do you think God's doing? What do you think God's doing? But it was like the next, here's what was said. A lot of people were saying the next wave, we're all talking whether we're in the end time, like we're in the last harvest. But see, a lot of people are saying it's not going to be one uh, specific, like big outbreak location. It doesn't, it's not going to look like that. Um, uh, but I do, I will say this, I do believe Korea and China, get ready. Get ready. You are going to have an outpouring. That's another heaven encounter for another time that I have. The Lord has shown me those two places, Korea and China. Wow. Okay, but what we were saying is it's not going to be just like one place, but it's actually going to be like the church stepping into her role. It's all of us laid down lovers being full, all of us being carrying power, glory, authority, and going into every realm of influence that we have. Because we can't just be only within the church, amen? Like we have to go out into the streets. We have to go out into the business world, into the market world, wherever your influence is. But that will be the big wave is the church, the bride being free. Intimidation has to shake off the church right now. I'm just, I feel, I'm calling it out right now in Jesus' name. Okay, so we have to get also, come on. Come on, guys. We have to get to a place where we're not just feasting. It's good to feast. Don't get me wrong. But we're, you feast. Here's the pattern. You feast and then you feed. You feast and then you feed over and over and over. We can't just sit. It's so good. And like there is seasons, trust me, like I've gone through where I have just sat and Lord's like, just sit in my banqueting table and just enjoy you know, enjoy my presence and feast on me and feast on my presence and it's good. But we can't just get so fat, amen? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we can't just get so fat of all the glory and the presence. We have to go feed. We have to, there, we are in a hurting world. We are in a hurting world. It's all over the news. I mean, you just what it just happened recently. I mean, with Florida, we are in such a hurting world. There is people. There is people that are so desperately needing Jesus that we can't just get so fat with feasting on him that we don't give him away, give him away, give him out to people wherever that looks like. Um, and, and maybe you're like, Anna, I, like, I don't know my, uh oh, something's happening to my screen guys. Sorry. Um, I don't know. Like, like I don't have like a place that like that I go when I preach or minister or whatever. And wherever your influence is, like wherever your place of influence is, you can pour out into that. I'm gonna like I'll give you an example. Maybe you're not a mom, so sorry. I'm mom, so I'm gonna speak about a mom thing. So I'm sorry, but that's me. We went through this season where my um my daughter was having some night terrors and she's she's four now but this is back when she was like three i want to say she was having some night terrors and um she would wake up and she'd be in that weird night terror state where they're kind of out of it kind of scared kind of zombie-ish because they're asleep half sleep anyways she'd be in night terrors and she'd wake up and she's like i see monsters i see things and i'm like okay honey like it's the middle of the night it's like one in the morning and i'm like okay let's grab our sword and i'm like what we came up with a song me and her i don't even think my husband knows this so he's watching now <laughs> by the way i do this in the middle of the night <laughs> but we grab our sword and we came up with a song that was like i march it was like i march in the army of god and i will crush satan 
in Jesus' name. And she would sing it with me. This is like, we just made it up and we'd stab, like a pretend to stab the little enemies that, you know, whatever, the little monsters she would see or whatever. And we'd sing it and sing it and sing it until she's like laughing and she's like full of joy and she's not feeling afraid anymore. But listen, that's my place of influence. Like I'm, I'm raising, like I take it so seriously, parenting. I'm raising right now a world changer. Like she is going to shake this world upside down <laughs> in Jesus name. Um, but wherever your influence is, feast on him, be in that intimacy place, but then go feed, feed out, feed out wherever that is. If it be at Walmart, if you just walk into the Walmart parking lot and you see somebody hurting, Go, you know, just say, can I pray for you? It doesn't have to be weird. You don't have to be, we can be prophetic, but not weird. Amen. <laughs> like you can just be like, Hey, you know, I love Jesus. Do you mind if I pray for you? It doesn't have to be like, you know, to, you don't have to over spiritualize it. You can just be, keep it really easy. Just, I just love Jesus. Can I just pray for you? You know, but let's, um, whoa. In humility, I want to talk about this. The other thing, um, but the, okay, going back, the freedom thing, just freedom and to, to release it, like release it, release it, feast and feed, release it. Um, the thing that was amazing about this conference was everyone there was so humble. I loved it. It was just like family too. I looked around the room at one point and Bishop Haman was praying over us and I saw I looked around the room and in the spirit, I could see like general's jackets on everybody. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. Like we really are in the army of Christ. This is amazing. Like my mind was just blown away. And I was like, but everybody, like, like the amount of, it's like you get a bunch of prophetic people, you could feel like the prophetic swirl was there. Like the fire of God was there. The power of God was there. But it was like, everybody's so hungry like laid down lovers who just love Jesus and it was so beautiful and I had this thought I remember I had this thought and I thought wow this this is is this like heaven like this feels like family and it's good like we all love each other and we all champion each other on and just encourage each other but we're so all hungry fireballs like we're all going after God and, and the things of God um but real out of a place of real humility, like the pure prophetic being a place in a place of humility. Amen. Um, whoo, we're just intimate lovers, right? Intimate lovers for him. Now I want to, whoo, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to transition because my goodness, I have so much, um, joy and Holy Spirit. I just feel it all right now. So I'm like, Lord, help me. Um, I want to transition right now because I feel like I, I want to pray right now before I, yeah, I want to pray right now before I transition to lead you into your own heaven encounter. So right now, I just want to take a moment to pray for all of you guys who are listening, who's joining in right now. Father, I just pray well, <sighs> thank you, God. You're so good. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray that you would show us one person right now, one person in our life that we're daily, you know, we interact with or that we see that we can um, shed your love on right now, Father. God, I pray for any area where we're not feeling completely free tonight, myself included, to just be who we are, Lord. I pray you would bring that to the surface right now. Bring that to the light. Yeah, and we just command that to go, whatever that might be, in Jesus' name. Any lies that we've come into agreement with about ourselves, about our ministry, about our capabilities, about our potential, even lies that have been spoken over us. We just break them off in Jesus' name, Lord. We just say we're hungry lovers. We want to go after you. We want to take risks for you, Jesus, with nothing, well, nothing else to motivate us. Not our own pride, our own ministry, our own building up of anything. Prove it, anything. <laughs> but just the motivation out of pure love for you, God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to take a moment and lead you into your own personal Jesus encounter. Okay, so you're still with me? Are you all still with me? <laughs> um, whoo, I just feel Holy Spirit. So, yay, I want to read to you Psalm 63 because I really like it. I Like, I love Psalm 63. Um, mm -hmm. Have you guys read it in the Passion Translation? It's amazing. Don't make fun of my glasses. <laughs> I need them to see. <laughs> um, Jump with me at Psalm 63 in the Passion Translation, um, verse 2. I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. Isn't that amazing? I love that scripture. So good. Okay, so what I want you to do, we're going into the fun time of, okay, now I want you <laughs> to encounter Jesus yourself. Yay. So what I'm going to do is, um, I might put on some music. Is that okay? Or is that weird? I don't know. If it comes out weird, we'll just, we'll just tell me. Just say it doesn't sound good, and we'll, I'll take it off. Um, but I don't know if you guys can hear this. Can you hear that? No? Maybe you can hear it. I don't know. I wasn't saying anything, so I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. <laughs> um Okay, right now, I just, what I want you to do, now, if you're joining in now, you missed the good stuff. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That's my, for my sister-in-law. I'm <laughs> just teasing you, sis. Okay, but um, what I want you to do, this is, now, I've gone, released those heaven cards, but I want this to be about you and Jesus, just between you and the Father, okay? So don't even look at me. I want you just to close your eyes. Just get in a place. Yeah, just get in a place where you could just really receive. Don't worry about, is this me? Is this Jesus? Is this the enemy? In Jesus' name, I just silence the voice of the enemy right now. I pray all fear to go, skepticism to go. I just pray over everybody's spiritual eyes to be open right now. Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I pray that everybody watching this will have their own personal heaven encounter with you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, with your eyes closed, I want what I want you to do is just, just take a moment and just say, Jesus, I love you. Don't worry about trying to see anything right now. Just say, Jesus, I love you. Just focus on being in a place of just worship. I love you, God. Pray in tongues if you pray in tongues. Go there. Pray in tongues. Shuka rabata rabashu, rabata rabashu. Jesus, I love you. Now, some of you are already seeing pictures and images right now as I'm talking to you. You're already seeing things from the Lord. Holy Spirit, I just say, blow on them, blow on them more. Who's ever joining in right now, just blow on them. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, this is what I see in the spirit. I'm just going to say what I see. I see in the spirit a room, and it looks like there's a giant room. It's a treasury room, and in the middle of the room, I see a box. And I feel like the Lord has specific uh, pri like presence for some of you in that box. And then what I see right now is I see... Um, also like a stone, like an aquamarine stone, and I see a ruby stone as well sitting on a table. And it's for someone, like someone specifically, like you love those stones. And Jesus just wants you to have them just to bless you. Don't look for the significance. It's just because he loves to give to his daughters and his sons. He loves you. And um, also, wow. So in this box, I'm just going to say what I see. I'm just just move, take and rest, just prophesying right now. I can see body parts right now in the box. So if this is you, you just claim it if you need this. I see a liver, um, I see a heart, I see thyroid, I see a brain, like the back part right here, the back part of the brain being healed. 
all these things, I feel like the Lord is opening up body parts tonight, areas that need healing. So if that's you, just claim that. Whoa, just claim that healing, Jesus. I pray that you would just release that right now. Your angels would just release that over whoever needs those things. And then I see um, on the other side of the room, I see a teddy bear. And I'm like, what is that about, Jesus? And I, like a teddy bear, why? And I feel like it's for someone who's really going through grief right now. Like you're really going through a sad time in your life. You've really just lost somebody who's close to you. and um, the teddy bear just symbolizes that place of just being hugged and held. Like the Lord just wants to hold you right now through what you're going through. So whoever that is, right now I just pray for you. Um, yeah, I just pray that your season would be renewed and then restored. And the Lord would be able to renew your joy where you've lost it. Um, and I pray for justice as well, where there's been injustice that you're... Um, yeah, justice would reign in your life in Jesus' name. Now, um, um <laughs> it's funny how are y'all with me still? Y'all quiet. You're all like soaking in Jesus' presence. You're gone now, huh? <laughs> um I see something else. I see a weapon for somebody. This is what I see. This sounds funny, but I see an angel in the corner of this room, and I see him sharpening the point of, it's like a pointed arrow, and I see him sharpening it and sharpening it and sharpening it, and it's a word for somebody that you're, um, he's sharpening right now uh, your word, like your word is being sharpened so that your prophetic declarations will be so much more on point and on target. Like Holy Spirit is sharpening it right now. You're going to have, wow, there's going to be so much more breakthrough. It's like there's actually going to be a breaker anointing on your prophetic declarations as you go out and prophesy. You're going to really prophesy and bring things um, down. Like you're going to be pulling things down from heaven, but from a place of authority, but real clarity, like words that are really crystal clear and really full of the Lord. And it's going to bring so much breakthrough for people's lives. So if that's you, if you're needing like that prophetic clarity, just claim that as yours because I it's like I see it I see an angel just sitting there sharpening that point whoa and so that's for you you can claim that as yours in Jesus name ho oh, okay now um, I just want to pray one more thing wow 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 as I'm sitting here, I see, I see a picture of despair. That's what I hear. Somebody, you've been going through such a hard season that you're so exhausted and tired right now, and you're so discouraged, and you almost feel like despair come over you. Um, see, it's interesting. I can see the heavenly stuff, and then I can also see the other stuff that's there. So in Jesus' name, I rebuke I rebuke a spirit of despair. I say it must go right now in Jesus' name. I say discouragement, you get off of her. I hear the word her. So it's, this is for a female who's listening or watching. So in Jesus' name, I declare discouragement, get off of her back right now. Lord, I pray hope, 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 hope into that situation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, thank you that you are correcting the wrong things. You're correcting the wrong things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well. Now someone, just focus, stay with me. Just focus back on Jesus. Just focus back on Jesus. Some of you are going to start seeing his face just like that right now. I can see his face just being released to some of you. It's beautiful. I can see the smile. I can see the smile of Jesus. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Listen, a hug from Jesus can change you. Like it can really change you. So right now, with your eyes closed, don't look at me. Don't be distracted. But with your eyes closed, I want you to just be in a place, a posture 
of just being able to receive. Receive. Thank you. Now somebody here, I have this word for you. If you're joining me, um, I have this word for you. I hear, um, sing again, sing again. You have to sing again. I think it's specific though. It's for somebody who it, it's not like, it's not like a word for somebody like me who really can't sing, but <laughs> it's actually somebody you actually carry like a worship anointing on you. Like you're really like a singer, like you're, um, you've trained in it, you minister in it. When you, when you sing, the anointing just falls. And um, I feel like there's been some restraint, um, either your life season um, where you can't be doing worship or almost like um, hmm, maybe like intimidation came on you at some point, whether you knew it or not, and you just haven't been able to sing as you, as you normally did before. And I just hear the Lord saying right now, sing again, sing again for the anointing is still there. It will be double portion if you're willing to step out and take risks again with me. Wow, there's such an anointing on your beautiful, beautiful voice. What a terrible thing to just lay down. I mean, you can always lay down whatever gifts God gives you and do what you want to do for him. But there is such an anointing on your voice. Listen, it breaks things open in the spirit. It breaks things open in the spirit that the, we are missing out by you putting it on a shelf. So if that's you right now, this is what I want you to do. Imagine it on the shelf. I want you to take it, if you will. And claim it back and say okay I'm gonna claim that because that is mine the Lord has given that to me and you'll know that this is you right now you're like you'll know this is you right now because you're gonna feel like chills going like you know when some when the Lord speaks and you either feel fire or you feel like goosebumps like someone spoke a word to me that gave me goosebumps just like whoo like I felt like my hair just got four inches taller you know um but that word's for you because there's such an anointing. But dare, here's what I hear the Lord say, dare to pick it back up. Dare to pick it back up and I'll give it to you double fold. The anointing will be so strong. So Father, I pray whoever that is right now in Jesus' name, woo, that you'll give them strength and courage, Lord. Strength and courage. And in the do right season, Father, and in the spirit of humility, that they would just take it back up. Wow, take it back up. I actually hear that right now for some of you. Um, not just about singing. I hear, I hear that phrase is actually more of a corporate word. Take it, dare to take it back up. That's you. Just tell me. Comment. I want to know. Am I hearing crazy? I don't know. Comments aren't flying. I can't see comments. So, um, dare to take it back up right now. Whatever that looks like. Whoa. Maybe you had a ministry, like you had it in your mind. You had this plan, right, of what God was going to do. And then it didn't work out how you thought. And that could be so discouraging. But see, the thing is, you are still called. Wow, wow, wow. It's like I just hear it so crystal clear. You know, my son, my daughter, you are still called. The calling hasn't been forgotten. The calling hasn't been forgotten. It might not have looked how you expected it to be, but would you dare? Would you dare tonight to pick it back up? Pick it back up. Run with me again. Run with me again. Whoa. <laughs> Run with me again. He's going to teach you more than you ever learned in this, whatever this is. I feel like it's different callings. He's calling you out right now. He's saying, would you dare to pick it back up? Jesus, thank you. You're breaking off freedom right now. It's like in the spirit, I'm going to say what I hear. In the spirit, I hear um, it's like rubber bands being snapped, which sometimes I hear when I know freedom's happening in in who's ever hearing this or maybe you'll see it later but i hear freedom happening because i hear these rubber bands being snapped and so it's something about you you've been under i don't know if it's fear or oppression or something where it's just like you've put your calling or your gifting on a shelf and jesus saying dare to pick it back up would you dare to pick it back up 
he's encouraging you and he's challenging you tonight at the same time. It's an encouragement, but hey, it's a challenge, right? Because it's always there's always a risk. There's always a risk. But he rewards, listen, he rewards risk. He really does. As long as it's in the right spirit, as long as it's to bring him glory, he will reward it. He will use you and he'll reward it. Jesus, right now, how? Oh, I just pray as well for those who are watching this who have been hurt and injured by the church. I actually hear that right now. So if you're watching this right now and you were hurt or injured at one point by the church, by somebody in leadership, or even sometimes it can be somebody who was a spiritual mentor or a mom. I remember I once had a spiritual mom in my life and, and I got hurt and I went through real abandonment from that and Jesus healed me of it. Like I'm on the other side now and I like totally bless her, love her, forgiven her. But the thing is it, it really did something in me. Like I really had to work through it and I didn't even recognize it until later in my life. Um, how that, how that hurt me. But I feel like somebody who's watching this right now, you've actually been hurt by somebody in um, leadership. I hear the phrase unrecognized, like gone of unrecognized. Your gifting has gone unrecognized. And I feel like the Lord wants to say to you tonight, my daughter, my son, I see you. I see you and you are so gifted and you're so talented. I see you. You are so gifted and you are so talented. It's time to tell those demons to run in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Somebody's getting healed right now. Whoa. It's like I see somebody's back being healed right now and your neck. So if you need your back or your neck healed right now, like if you're on here and you're like, okay, she hasn't prayed for healing. That's okay. You don't have to. Jesus can do it anyways. He's got it. But listen, I do feel like there's a thing for backs and necks. I'm doing this because I feel my back and my neck on fire. <laughs> so I'm like, yay, Jesus. So right now I just commend um, the spine just to come into alignment. I actually commend if there's any infusion is what I'm hearing and seeing. If there's any infusion in the, um, the discs or in between um, ooh, vertebrae, I see like in the neck somewhere, like on the it's like the left side of my neck feels pain. So if that's you, if you are on the left side of your neck right now, I just want you to go ahead and just start moving it in the presence of the Lord. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just start moving your back. Sometimes we don't even know Jesus touching us until we start moving. And we're like, oh, wow, it feels different. Test it out, guys. Test it out. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Okay, so some of you I'm seeing you're getting physically emotionally healed. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, Tina. Praise God. So often um our physical healing comes from like our physical pain comes from emotional wounds, right? Like I don't know if that's you, Tina. I'm not saying it's you, but don't take it that way. But often we just get we get the inner healing and then the physical just just manifests just like that and we're like, "Oh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't ever see that like that. Okay, let's stay in this place for a second. I don't want to, I'm not released yet. <laughs> Alex, praise God, your lower back and spine feels better. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Sorry, this is a longer one, guys, but it's good. Isn't it good? Come on. Woo. Just wait on the Lord here for, with me for a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when I said that word earlier about, um, I don't know if you were on when I said this, but I said that at that conference when I looked around the room, I saw General's jackets being released. Um, the Lord just showed me that again. He showed me on the side, in this place in heaven that I'm talking about, um, in this room in heaven, I saw, right now I just saw um, almost like military jackets or um, general's jackets or army looking jackets, like in a line kind of on, on, a, on, a, um, on a rack. I'm not, I'm sorry. 
Sometimes I just try to describe heaven things and I'm like, ah, lack of words. Ah. <laughs> Anybody who speaks more than one language can relate because I do and it, it gets combobbled in my head sometimes with Holy Spirit. <laughs> but what I saw is I saw this rack of these army jackets and I just see the Lord saying, come on, come on. I hear him saying, come on, come on, come on. Put on your jacket. Come on. Woo! It's time. It is time. There is a fire on tonight. It is time to raise up. I feel like he says, raise up, raise up, raise up. Step into your mantle. Step into what I've called you to do. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray a release of fire right now. I, I have I feel like there's a fire for pastors specifically over different churches. Whoa, or different spheres of influence in ministry right now. I just see like almost like pastors putting on their jackets, their army jackets. Whoa, but it's in a place of complete humility and love. Thank you, Jesus. So come on. Whoa, I just hear the Lord saying, come on, come on. Raise up, raise up. You're not a victim. You're not hit by the, you're hit. You, I mean, you, you felt hit by the enemy, but listen. Your God is so much bigger than those hits. So in Jesus' name, I just pray for whoever is in that place where they feel, this is what I see. I see someone laying, you feel like you've been laying on the floor. Like you're just like, oh, I'm so done right now. Like I'm so, I'm so hit right now by so much warfare. And I see the Lord taking you by the shoulders and pulling you up and just saying, Come on, you are made to shine. You are made to shine, my beloved. So, Father, whoever that is right now, I just pray for them in Jesus' name. I pray the fire of the Lord just to fall on them. Whoa! I pray the arrows of the enemy just to come off right now. In Jesus' name, God, I pray for darkness to get away from them, Lord. I pray that only their ears will be influenced by those that are carrying light. Thank you, Jesus. I pray over their thoughts as well. That will be only influenced by your word and your truth, Father. Come up, my daughter, my son, for I love you. I have called you for so much more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, this is really funny. This is a weird one. Before I go, I just felt like I, because I, I don't want this to go long, too long, guys. I know you're, you're like all tired. <laughs> it's late at night. I'm sorry. Um, but I do feel like there's somebody here who, um, it's like I just saw an angel carrying a rib. I don't know if you're on here and you've bruised your rib or maybe your back is hurting, like, but it's actually like a rib out of place or a bruised rib. And I just feel, um, it's like a, I saw an angel carrying a rib and I saw his hand just like this. So Father, whoever that is, I just pray and release that healing to them right now in Jesus name. I thank you, Jesus, that you want to heal uh, their rib and set it back in perfect alignment, perfect placement in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, guys, it's been fun. Thanks for joining in. Um, let me read for you. Can I read through comments for a second just to see who's on with me? Wow. Robert, I'm so glad your neck is feeling better. Thank you, Jesus. So good. Praise God. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray for anybody on here who uh, still needs healing, God. I pray let it manifest right now. Like, let your presence, whew, your, <laughs> it's like I could film, your presence that was here um, as people join in, it doesn't stop. Like, it just keeps going, Father. I pray that the, everybody who's watched this will just continue on in their heaven encounter tonight with you. Wow, would you surprise, I hear this word, would you surprise us? Would you surprise us with deeper and crazier experiences with you, Lord? 
Oh, but like intimate encounters with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you guys for joining in tonight. And I'm so blessed to have you join in. Bye, guys.